Hello there, and welcome to JJ Painting. I am JJ, and I know I paint in just about every video I do, but I never really do dedicated, dedicated tutorials where I do a step-by-step -step walkthrough. And I thought I'd do one, at long, long last, uh, for this video right here. And the reason I want to do it for this video is because, first of all, the model we're painting today I've had for a while. Uh, I'm not going to go into the precise number of years, um, but it's been a while, let's just say that. And the reason I want to do that is, well, for three reasons. First of all, I should probably paint this guy at last, actually paint him. The second reason is because I do feel like when it comes to painting tutorials and technique guides, there's a lot of guides out there to do all the little components of different colour schemes, especially ones for things like Chaos and other armies. But there's not a lot of tutorials out there that show you how to bring all the different components of each army together. So what this is going to be is a bit of a run through of all the main colour schemes that you can go for, go through, if you're going to do a Nurgle army, and a way to tie it all together. And the other reason to do this as well, that I want to do this, is because there's a lot of models out there that go across the Slaves to Darkness and the God specific armies. But it's a bit of a challenge to get them to cohesively go from one to the other just using paint. But hopefully today I'll show you how to do that so you can get a slightly more cohesive feeling army where everything looks a little bit more unified and it fits a bit nicer as well. So obviously today we're going to be doing the Gorby's Chariot right here, which I think is quite a cool model. I had this guy, for, like I said, for many years. And the plan here, very simply, is to do all the various components of him. So we'll be doing both riders, the chariot itself and the gore beast, all breaking them down individually and painting them up bit by bit. So without further ado, let's crack on. As you can see, we've got our four components here all nice and laid out. So we've got our two riders and our uh, gore beast, like I said. But for now, we're just going to be focusing on the chariot itself and these two little bits, one which comes off the other. I built this a few years ago, so I wasn't actually as good at putting things together back then, so if there are bits of detail that I do miss over the course of this video, then I do apologise, I hope you can all forgive me. But, in any case, let's, uh, let's crack on with some painting. We're going to start off with a nice coat of Nuln Oil, just to go over all the metallic bits, and then we will go from there. As you can see, that's that first coat of Nuln Oil all done. Uh, it's taken a bit of the shine off if you look at the sides where it hasn't had any Nuln Oil or anything on it. And it's quite a thin coat, so it's just there to help pick out a few details, all those nubbins down the front and that little chaos symbol on the front as well, and just to help dirty down the blades. So like I said, it is designed purely to get the just a very thin coat on there. Cool. Okay, cool. So now that we've got our first layer of Nuln Oil over the chariot, we're going to do some Rhinox Hide. Yeah! Rhinox Hide, watered down with some Lamia Medium. And the only reason I'm not watering it down too much is because I think that Lamia Medium does genuinely give you a better control over what you're painting than if you were just to go straight onto it with a with water and it's a little bit less graining. Cool. So next step now. So as you can see, we've got our Lamia Medium now. Just going to apply it with a slightly smaller brush. Oh, so whereas before we were just sticking to the recesses, we're also going to stick to around the rivets, but we're also going to come out and across the front of the chariot here as well. And then just running it up and along. And obviously, don't forget the inside of the chariot either. That's quite important to remember. Mm -hmm. 
So whilst we're leaving our brown rhinoxide to dry, we're gonna move on now to the first layer of the inside of the chariot. So if you're just looking there, you can see that we've got a nice wooden panel paneling there. And for that, we're gonna be using dryad bark, dryad bark on the inside of that. Now, obviously this is a Nurgle chariot, and this is one of the parts that's gonna be a little bit harder to immediately identify. But what we're gonna be doing for this one is we're going to be trying to make the wood look a little bit more rotten, a bit more creaky, and a bit less like it's, you know, freshly felled trees, or like freshly uh, cured wood. So it's not gonna have a particularly nice finish on it. We're gonna be trying to get that normal kind of like rotted through wood, like there's termites and stuff eating through it, or possibly nurgling, so who knows. Um, so dryad bark, here we go. What we've got from the dryad bark side of things is it's a relatively light brown. It's still very dark, but with Rhinox hide, because it's so much darker, it's harder than to make anything you do with it look a little bit dirtier because it's already so dark. Whereas I find Dryad Bark is the right level of dark brown, but you can still do plenty with it. When you highlight it, you can bring out a lot of detail. You can do a lot in terms of characterizing it as well, so you can make it look new and lacquered if you want to you can make it look old and worn out and it's just an easier brown to navigate. I find that if you want a really like fine lacquered look then absolutely go for uh, what's that one I just said that's it Rhinox Hide but if you want something that's a little bit easier to characterize then Dryad Bark is definitely the choice paint I'd say. So just do that very quickly there we go that's all in there and the Mournfang Brown, Mournfang Brown uh, I can't talk today, the Rhinox height is still drying so what we're going to do is we're going to move a bit further out and we're going to have a look at these tusks that are just here. We're going to have a quick look at these tusks. Now keeping with the themes of Nurgle we want them to be quite rotten and quite old so we're going to start off with a nice base coat of Xandri Dust which is one of the better base coats for Nurgle models in general I'd say. So I'd always recommend using it. If you don't want to use, just go for Death Guard Green, but we'll get to all that a bit later on. So here we go with our Morn Fang. Not Morn, why do I keep saying Morn Fang Brown? Here we go with our Xandari Dust. So now that we've got a bit, everything's starting to dry out there now, and our chariot is starting to look pretty disgusting and pretty dirty, I quite like that. It's gonna be, whoever has to clean the chariots for these guys is probably has an absolute nightmare job ahead of them. But we carry on with the facade and all the wheels. So as you can see, it's looking quite dirty now, but we wanna start getting some of that more rusty effect through. And to start off with the rusting effects, we're going to go on to a bit of an interesting one. Reichland Flesh, Reichland Flesh. That's our chariot now looking a little bit more dirty down, a little bit more filthy, which is good. And those rust effects are starting to come through, but we're not quite done on the rust. So we're gonna go back now to these two. So we're gonna to go to Rhinox Hide and Corn Red this time. But we're also gonna add a tiny bit of Troll Slayer Orange to that as well, just to get the rust effects out.
with our now very, very rusty chariot. All the little bits of dirt and filth on there, which I think look quite, quite good. Now we're gonna corrosion now with our Sotec Green. And this is gonna be back with our good old friend, Lamian Medium. Sotec Medium, Sotec Medium, Sotec Green, with some Lamian Medium. And all we're doing here is just putting it around the recesses. So that is our corroded, highly corroded chariot, looking pretty solid. So we're going to wash the interior of our chariot, and we're also going to do a wash on the horns as well. The interior, we're going to be using Athonian camo shade, and then we're going to go back to a staple for the horns, and we're going to go with Agrax earth shade. Now, if I wanted to do like a cleaner bone effect, I'd probably use something like Seraphim sepia, but that's not the desired result. So we're going with something which is going to make the bone look a little bit older, a little bit more dirty and a bit more run down in general. Again, we're continuing with this dirty down aesthetic as well of everything that's rotting and falling apart and probably bought second hand. I imagine all the Nurgle chariots are bought second hand because Nurgle, you know, he's a bit of a cheapskate. He deals with things that grow organically. There's no way he's putting money into anything nice. And also, to be fair, if everything's going to just get rotten and diseased, I can't say I blame the man. You know, why buy something nice that's just going to get diseasified? We're going to return to the parts of the chariot that we've done so far. And as you can see, it's all starting to look quite nice and quite grisly. But we're going to do some highlighting now, and we're just going to use Stormhost Silver for our highlight. <laughs> Agrax Earthshade Wash to the spokes on the wheel. So that is our chariot. This is what our chariot looks like now. So that's all the metal and all the parts of it that are done. Right, so if we get back to the horns now, or the tusks, or whatever you want to call them. Uh, the tusks down the front. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go back over them now with a mix of Screaming Skull and Xandri Dust. Probably three parts Xandri and one part Screaming Skull. Because...
what we're going to do now is we're going to do a bit of a spot highlight by adding a tiny bit more, a first highlight rather, by adding a tiny bit more Screaming Skull to our mix of Zandri Dust and Screaming Skull. tusks on the inside of there, with a few lines going into the middle. Not the best, so I will have to go back and tidy that up, um, but for the purposes of what I'm trying to show you guys today, it'll do. Right, so let's go back to the interior of our chariot, which is now all dried up, as you can see. And so to highlight this, what we're going to start with is Gawthor Brown, and that's going to be our first highlight on the inside. Now, this bit's a little bit less visible, so I'm not gonna go the whole hog because obviously there's gonna be two riders standing on it, but it is still visible. And this highlight is more like a dry brush at the moment as well. So I'm only really doing the center of the chariot. It's a very ad hoc pattern, but it's in there. And the other thing to remember is that there's gonna be two guys standing in there, so that's why I'm not hugely fussed about anything going on in that interior. Cool, so now we've nearly finished the chariot, so what the next thing is going to be is the octet on the front and these little handrails on the side as well. I haven't done those yet, but I'm going to do them now and you'll see why I've left it. So we're going to start off with Balthazar Gold. <laughs> Our gold is now in place. So what we're going to move on to next, flesh shade, right wing flesh shade, there you go. And to keep it to the middle of the octet and then just work outwards. <laughs> flesh shade on there. Whilst we are waiting for that to dry, what I am going to do is bring some blood for the blood god, which I haven't used in a little while. Um, I'm going to put that along here. So just along the little spoke, the little blades on the sides of the... So what we're going to do now is quickly add a couple more rust spots. And for that, we're just going to use Troll Slayer Orange. I'm just going to water this one down because uh, we're not going to use masses of it. So it's literally just to create a couple of tiny little rust spots along
Okay, so the front of this is now dried enough that we can do the next step on it. So what we're going to start off with is Sycorax Bronze. So there we are, it's all highlighted along the front there, got a nice little Sycorax highlight along the sides, and that is nearly the body of the chariot done. The last thing to do, second highlight, rather, on that section. Now for that, Stormhost Silver is coming back out again. So, again, that is our the first half of our Nurgle chariot done. And this is what I mean when I say we're starting to put all the colours together. So, to begin with, you could argue that this could fit into almost any undivided army or potentially even a corn, potentially even a corn army. But the thing to remember is that the idea isn't that we're putting the same colour on every bit of the model. The idea is that we experiment and have different bits of the model at different stages of decay and they've got different levels of plague on them. And the idea is to balance the colours of Nurgle across the entire model and across all the different components of it. So that's why we've stuck with this, this part of the model here. Cool, so there we have it, our gore beast. Chariot, Chariot is now all painted up and ready to be stuck to the base. Next time we get together, we're going to be tackling the Gore Beast part of the Gore Beast Chariot and continuing with our trend of using all the colours that exemplify and we would associate with Nurgle on different parts of the model. So we'll be using a few different colours to what we've done this time, so stay tuned if you want to see a more holistic look at how to paint Nurgle. But thank you all very, very much for watching, guys, and thank you all very much for joining in. If you did enjoy this video, please like, subscribe, hit the bell button, all that good you. YouTube shitty stuff. I post my videos on Wednesdays and Fridays. Thank you all very much for joining us. Goodbye and have a lovely day.